Okay, hello everyone. My name is Kathy Zhang. I'm a principal engineer at Huawei USA. Uh, Mohan cannot make it today, but he has recorded a, a demo video. So I'm going to show, um, which I'm going to show in this presentation. So today's topic is about uh, how we integrate OpenStack service function chain with uh, Ono's SDN controller to realize the service chaining functionality. So here the SFC means service function chain. So you may wonder why you are here, what can you take away from this session? So I, I'm going to first um, give a brief overview on the OpenStack Neutron service function chain feature. Uh, is flexible architecture and how it can integrate with different types of SDN controllers and what this API look like, its current code status and the second phase features. Actually, I already gave a presentation on this um, in last uh, uh, summit. So, so here I'm just, go, uh, I'm just going to give a very brief overview on that. And then I'm going to give a brief introduction on Ono's controller is distributed architectures for uh, scalability support. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about how OpenStack on um, service function chain can integrate with Ono's SDN controller to realize the service function chain functionality. So first, what is service function chain? So I guess probably most of you already know what service function chain. So that, what we mean by the service function chain is that through a centralized control, um, safe chain management control platform, different tenants' traffic flows can be automatically uh, steered through different sequences of service functions. And those service functions can run on VM or run on containers or run on physical device. So here's the um, service function chain, uh, OpenStack Neutron service chain architecture. At the top is a Neutron, OpenStack Neutron server and at the bottom are a few um, compute nodes. And at the north bound of the OpenStack Neutron server, there's the OpenStack service function chain API for the user to specify the service chain requirement. And then we have a common southbound service chain driver API so that different controllers can, different controllers driver can plug in to realize the service function chain functionality. And currently, we already supported the OVS service chain driver path and also the Ono service chain driver path implementation, which I'm going to go through in later slides. Uh, we're going to add more support in second phase. Like SD, uh, we already started the ODL service chain driver. We're also going to you know, write the Dragonflow service chain driver and OVN service chain driver. And then on the compute node, you see the OVS switches. And so the OVS switches will be programmed by the upper layer control plan to set up the traffic steering path for the service chain required for the service chain based on the user's specification on the OpenStack Northbound API. And so once that um, traffic steering path is set up, the traffic from original from the source will go through each on OVS switches, and then, you know, to switch it to the required service function. So here's a, a service chain API. Uh, in the service chain API consists of two parts. One part is flow classifier, and the other part is a, is a ordered sequence of service, function, service functions. So I first talk about what flow classifier. So the flow classifier will specify the classification rules that is used to classify the flow that will go through a chain. And the sequence of service functions basically is a chain that you know, the flow will go through. So for each service function in the service chain, it is represented by a, either a unidirectional port pair or bidirectional single pair. It will be a single um, port. It will be a, uh, uh, this is a neutron port. As we know, like for each service function running on VM, it's going to have a neutron port. So we specify the service function um, according to its um, neutron port, which is a logical port. So if there are like, you know, multiple service functions, functional like service functions, you can group them together for load distribution purpose. So you are going to specify a port pair groups, which consists of, you know, multiple service functional, multiple functional like service functions. 
So this uh, slide gives information on this project. We already um, completed the first release in February. And there's, uh, we have an uh, architecture API specification. And then this link, you can go to this link to get more information. We also have a project wiki page, which you know, describes uh, all the project information. Um, we have a weekly IRC meeting, which is every Thursday. And if you are interested in you know, you know more what we have been discussed before in the IRC channel, you can go to this uh, meeting log uh, link. So what's the second phase features we are going to, um, to do in the, uh, in the Newton, Newton cycle? So we're going to add support for a chain of service functions hosted on containers. Currently, our functionality is, um, is a chain of service function hosted on VMs. So we can create, we, can, we already can support uh, service chain creation, deletion, and uh, modification. So which includes like you can dynamically add a service function into the chain or delete the service function from the chain. And we, so in the second phase, we are going to add support for a chain of those service function hosted on container. We are also going to add uh, a service chain with service functions hosted on physical device. Uh, we already started to integrate with uh, a VF manager, um, which is called Tucker project. Um, we are also starting, we already started writing an ODL service chain driver, and we're going to write, um, to work on OVN service function driver and Dragonflow service, service function chain driver to support the implementation paths on three open source uh, SDN controllers so that you can select you know, whichever you want to use. And we are going to add support for IETF and SH encapsulation. Um, we also will add support for symmetric service function chain paths. So now I'm going to go to give a very brief introduction of um, ONOS. So here's a very um, slide shows a typical SDN architecture. The top layer is the application layer, the middle layer is the control layer, and the bottom layer infrastructure layer, which consists of you know, either virtual network, uh, virtual physical network device. So how we map this to the service function chain component. So the OpenStack networking SFC component will map to the application layer, the ONOS controller map to the control layer, and the virtual switch or physical switch or as well as those service functions running on VM or container or physical device map to the infrastructure layer. So here's the uh, ONOS architecture. Um, its key characteristic is it's a distributed architecture. So it's based on, uh, uh, so by distributed, what, I, what we mean is that um, it has multiple uh, ONOS controller instances. So those instances combine together to form a cluster. So from external point of view, you feel it's just like one ONOS controller instance, but actually internally, they are multiple. And they coordinate with each other to sync information between each other, so like to support the scalability requirement. So here, like, you know, northbound, it has, you know, a northbound core API, and then, of course, it has a distributed core, which is a key part. And then it has a southbound core API, which can interface with different adapters to support different uh, protocols um, talking with uh, um, data plan components. So here is the uh, uh, function chain component into this, uh, in this architecture. As we mentioned before, in the app layer, we, we, is the uh, OpenStack networking SFC component with the ONO service function chain driver. And then the northbound, there is an ONO northbound for service function chain functions. And then there, were, there is an ONO service function chain manager in the core. And then there's a southbound API for service function chain provisioning on the device, support that on the device. So now I'm going to go through the demo scenario uh, we are going, I'm going to show later. Uh, in order for you to better understand the demo, I'm going to show what, what scenario we are going to uh, demo and also the demo topology. So the demo topology consists of a source VM, which is where the traffic originates, and the destination VM in VM4, which is the traffic ends. There will be two service functions uh, in this demo, running on VM2 and VM3. 
we are going to show two scenarios. The first scenario is, you know, the uh, the traffic is a pin traffic from source VM to destination VM without going through the service function chain before we install the service function chain. So you are going to just see, you know, the traffic activity on source VM, destination VM. There will be no traffic activity on uh, service function VM2 and service function VM3. The second scenario is uh, pin tra same pin traffic, but that's after we install service function chain. Then you will see that you know, the traffic will be forced to go through the VM2 and VM3 and then reach the destination. So you will see the uh, traffic activity is shown on VM2 and VM3 for the second scenario. So for scenario one, uh, as I described below uh, before, it's like from VM1 to VM4 directly. So for this scenario, you are going to see in the demo, we are going to create a neutron port, a six neutron port for, for that. And then we are going to create the VMs, which has source VM, uh, service function VM, service function, uh, uh, two service function VMs, and then destination VMs. So we create this through the Nova CLI and also associate the port with the uh, VMs. And then without, we, are, we are not going to do any service chain creation. So you just directly pin from um, VM1 to VM4 without um, going through the service function chain. So in the second scenario, we are going to create the service function chain uh, using the uh, OpenStack networking SFC CLI. So and then after that, you are going to see the traffic go through these service functions. So first, we create a service function chain port pair. We create a service function port pair for the service function one, and then we create another um, port pair for service function two. We are also going to create port pair groups, which means you know, each service function type will have uh, uh, multiple instances. So once those are created, right, um, once those CLI successfully um, created, the Neutron will send the create request to Onos, and then Onos will store this information into its database. We're also going to create a flow classifier, and same thing, you know, Onos is going to, you know, once this is created, you know, the Neutron will send this to the Onos controller, Onos controller will store the flow classifier details in its DB. And last, the CLI is to create the port chain. So this port chain basically is associate the traffic classifier, which is created before, with the, the group of, with a sequence of port pair groups that's created before. And then once this is successfully created, um, the owners will store the port chain details in this DB. And also, only at this step, it's going to initiate an event to generate and download the flow rules to the data plane components, which is a switch to set up the service function chain traffic steering path. That's it. And then, so these are the process of creating the service chain. And then we are going to trigger the traffic, pin traffic from the source VM. And this time you are going to see the traffic goes through the service functions, which is specified in the chain creation. Now I'm going to switch uh, to the demo window on which uh, Moha has re uh, recorded. Um, so I'm going to show here. Yeah. Sorry, why there's no voice? It looks like a problem with the voice. Okay, so I just continue. Can you hear anything? Uh, looks like some problem with the voice. Some problem with the voice. Sorry about this.
Um, I guess um, because this is a pre-recorded with voice, but looks like some problem with the voice, so I'm going to just to explain it. I hope I can time this better to match the slide, I mean the video. Uh, so let's see. So here this shows a topology. This is like, you know, the, we have the destination VM, source VM, and then the service functions. So first, we are going to create uh, these uh, service function instances. You see that you have a source VM, destination VM instance, and service function one, and service function two instances. And they show this IP address, and uh, yeah, these are the... So once we create these instances, we show this window. The upper window is a source, uh, source VM window, and then enables the, the TCP dump, so you can show an activity. And this is a service function uh, ingress port window, the left and the right one is service function egress port window. And this is the ingress port window for the second service function, and the egress port window for the second service function. And then this is a destination VM. So now we're going to pin the traffic, and then you see that the activities only shows up on the, uh, not here, here's the pin. So once you enter the pin, yeah, you see the activity only show on the source and destination window. There's nothing, no activity on the service function on Windows. So now it's correct, make it clean, make the window clean. So now we're going to go to the controller window. We're going to, so here it shows all the ports has for the VMs, for the port for the VMs. It just shows the different ports for different VMs for it service function VM, and then source VM, and destination VM. So we go to the ML2 plugin to set up the, um, the Mechanism driver, to set the Mechanism driver to Ono's driver. Here also. Just you show that it's hooked up to the owners. Now we're going to create the port pair, which is, you know, create each service function's port pair. So this is a, a OpenStack Neutron service function chain API syntax. So you specify the ingress port and egress port for that um, port pair, basically for that service function. And then here it shows that you know this port pair has been created. So now we're going to create another um, port pair for the second uh, service function. So we create port pair two, and then we specify the ingress port and the egress port. So you're going to see the second port pair is created successfully. And also here, it shows it's already created with port pair group and uh, port ID. So the next, we're going to create the port pair group. 
So we are going to create propel group for the first service function type and the propel group for the second service function type. I'm not sure how well you can see the screen, but basically that's what it does. And then so uh, propel group one has been created successfully. Here it shows this propel group has been created successfully. And then now we're going to create a second propel group for the second type of service functions. Here it shows it has been created support pair group two. So now we are going to create the flow classifier. Yeah, the syn syntax is neutron flow classifier and then create. We're going to specify you know, the classification rules, like source IP prefix. What is a source IP prefix for this flow? So it's 20.0.0.3. And then we're going to specify destination uh, IP prefix for this flow. I think I'm going to scroll a little bit, a little bit too slow. And then eventually we're going to create the, uh, the, port, the port chain. Now we're going to create the port chain. So in this port chain create CLI, we're going to specify what flow classifier will be associated with this port chain. And also we're going to specify what's the sequence of port pair group that will associate with the service chain, right? For instance, so here we're going to say this service chain consists of port group one and then port, port pair group two. So there are two port service function groups associated with the chain. And also there is this flow classifier, which we have created before associated with this chain. And then we give uh, uh, this service chain a name called port chain one. So you see that it's already created. So once that's created, so now here it just shows that in, in almost database, it's also created the port chain. The previous screen shows in the OpenStack, you know, screen shows database is created. And this screen shows in the almost database is created with the flow classifier, with the port pair groups. So now we are going to, uh, to pin the, to do the traffic pin. Mm, something. Okay. Oh yeah, first we, we enable the flow dump. I think here is showing a lot, uh, quite some details of you know the uh, the I mean in the in the data pass, but the, so now I think you know it's going to. Now we're going to go to the window that shows the source VM, destination VM, 
and now we do the pin, right? So once you enter the pin, you see the activity is showing up on both destiny VM or and all those service function windows. Yeah. So this shows that once we use the service function chain, OpenStack service function chain API to configure the service function chain, then when you do the pin, it will the traffic will be forced to go through those service functions that's specified in the CLI. Yeah, you see all this traffic activity on this service function one window and service function two window. It's not like before. It only no activity on those service function window. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, let me see how much time I have. Yeah, okay. Any questions? Uh, did you have any dependency on uh, uh, the version of an uh, open v switch that you were running and um, did are you using Liberty or Mikata? Yeah, it, it is. It is. Actually, we have implemented the path on the OVS driver directly program the OVS. That's another, uh, that's what our reference implementation. Uh, but this is about the other path, which is through the ONOS controller path. Yeah, so we have implemented both. Path. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? So if not, that's all. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>